Today we're going to begin with a brief review of the types of mental illness. These are discussed in your text on pages 37 to 45, and on table 2-3 on page 49, you'll see a list of the types of mental illness with examples. First, I want to review some of the data we see. This is supplied by the uh, National Institute of Mental Health, which provides us with an abundance of data but right now I'm going to talk about the prevalence of some of these illnesses in the population. Prevalence is usually represented by a percentage and is the proportion of a population that has specific characteristics at any given time. I also want to make um, to distinguish between any mental illness which is referred to in the literature as AMI, and serious mental illness, SMI. The National Institute of Mental Health um, defines AMI as a mental, behavioral, or emotional disorder excluding substance abuse and developmental uh, disabilities, which is diagnosable currently or within the past year and is of sufficient duration to meet the diagnostic criteria specified in the DSM. We're going to talk about the DSM a little more in a few minutes. The text refers to DSM-4. Uh, since the text was published, there's a new edition. It's now the DSM-5. Serious mental illness follows all that same definition, but you need to add which results in functional impairment which substantially interferes with or limits one or more major life activities. So I would urge you to check the National, Inter uh, Na National Institute of Mental Health website um, for more detailed statistics. But in 2013, and this percentage um, carries forward um, for several years, 18.5% of people over 18, or adults as they define them, had AMI, and 4.2 serious mental illness. It's about the same for the state of Maine. So let's quickly review the types of mental illness that, um, whoops, that um, are found in the text on the next few slides. Adjustment disorders. We all experience life's stressors, illness, loss, um, hurricanes, tornadoes. Most of us have coping skills that help us through these times, but some people can't adjust. Their symptoms can be emotional, such as anxiety or depression, or behavioral, such as getting into fights um, and, and antisocial behavior. Those are the people who have adjustment disorders. Anxiety disorders, it's not a temporary feeling of fear or worry. Again, something we all experience. But it's fear or uh, worry that has the potential to become, to, go, to be ongoing and become a disorder when it lasts longer than in the literature is usually given six months and again when it interferes with activities of daily living. Uh, finally, um, cognitive uh, disorders which impose limitations on a person's ability to uh, store information or solve problems. And dissociative disorders such as alterations in conscious um, and awareness of the, your own identity. Identity. Amnesia, I think, is in the text is given as one of the examples. Eating disorders, pretty um, pretty well known in the literature. These are disorders that result in abnormal eating habits, and those abnormal eating habits negatively affect a person's mental health or physical health. Mood, order, mood disorders, to skip a couple, fictitious disorders being 
um, those disorders that people may maybe unconsciously create for themselves. Mood disorders are affective disorders and include depression, bipolar, um, SAD or seasonal affective disorder, um, and self-harm. And in the certainly in um, traumatized victims, you of, often see the this uh, mood disorder of self-harm. Cutting is one example of a mood disorder. Personality disorders. There are really three subcategories of personality disorders, um, sometimes called cluster in the literature. The first cluster is characterized by odd or eccentric thinking. The second by dramatic and often unpredictable behavior and risky behavior. The third by anxious or fearful behavior. Uh, OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder is an example of this third cluster. Psychotic disorders are characterized by a loss of contact with reality. Hallucinations, delusions, schizophrenia is, um, is in this category. Um, again, we're probably not going to talk much about substance-related disorders in this class, since as far as the uh, NIMH statistics don't include them, but um, they're listed in the DSM. And then tick disorders. Many of you have heard of Tourette's syndrome. That's a tick disorder. The text then goes on to talk about um, symptoms or manifestations of mental illness. Anxiety, psychosis, disturbance in moods, disturbances in cognition are all on individual um, symptoms that people experience. Later in the semester, we'll look in a lot more detail at what happens um, in the community that leads to and exacerbates um, disturbances, uh, mental disturbances, including um, the, what you see listed here on this set of slides. We're going to use the term disorder. Again, the, the term disease, um, as it's discussed in the textbook, is reserved for conditions with a known pathology, a medical pathology, which you often do not see in um, disorders of mental disorders. Mental disorders um, are reserved for clusters, as the slide says, of symptoms associated with distress and disability. Um, Making a challenge, uh, making a diagnosis is very challenging because, it, as it says here, it occurs on a continuum. It may manifest itself in many different ways, but there's usually no physical indicator that there is, um, that there is a problem. As we see here, um, the disorders that we've talked about um, are divided into broad categories. They can overlap, but the DSM is used uh, for treatment so that um, psychiatrists can classify um, the, the problems um, for insurance reimbursement. Some things are, are reimbursable, some things aren't. Um, obtaining services and surveillance, meaning public health surveillance, so that the prevalence um, can be determined. No classification system is perfect. And the next couple of slides, um, again, give the, classic, the, the classes of mental disorders. From the, these are from the DSM-4 um, with examples. Again, the slides are pretty clear that um, when the syndrome meets all the criteria for the diagnosis, then we have um, a mental disorder. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the DSM, um, about the DSM-5 and these categories. 
unless you go on to become a psychiatrist, you're not going to be diagnosing people. Uh, psychiatrists, along with uh, health professionals, uh, physical health professionals, do the diagnosis. Those who do diagnose uh, use the Diagnosis and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder, the DSM. There have been updates um, from the one that was published in 2000 and mentioned in the text. Some of the reasons that the revisions were made were that the DSM-4 didn't seem to adequately address the lifespan perspective how symptoms may represent themselves differently at different stages of, of our growth, of our developmental growth, and certainly didn't represent a lot of the cultural um, variations. We'll talk about cultural variations um, later in the semester. There also has been considerably more involvement of neuroscience um, in, in the 2000s since the dsm 4 was published. And new um, codes have been established to represent um, those different um, findings. On this slide, we see a, a list of some common uh, treatments. And we're going to, dis when we discuss the current system in a few weeks, we will discuss most of these again. For now, I want to talk in a little more detail about psychopharmacology. There are segments of the profession and segments of the client population that debate the use of drugs. We have seen some recent examples in the news of people refusing to take their drugs uh, in order to be declared competent uh, to stand trial. And these are some of the kinds of issues that are involved with psychopharmacology. Columbia University Press defines psychopharmacology in the following way. In its broadest sense, it's the study of all pharmacological agents that affect mental and emotional functions. The term is usually applied more specifically to the study and synthesis of drugs used in the control of psychiatric illnesses, namely antipsychotic, anti-anxiety, antidepressant, and anti-manic medications. As we saw in our look at history, the widespread use of drugs among individuals um, is a relatively recent phenomenon starting in the 1950s. But let's uh, just briefly describe the, um, the categories that I just mentioned. Antidepressants, as you might assume, are used to treat depression, anxiety, and sometimes other conditions. They can help improve sy sy symptoms. One of the things to understand about, about psychopharmacology is that it doesn't cure the disease. It helps with symptoms. So it can help improve the symptoms of sadness and hopelessness. Um, or of difficulty concentrating. They are not addictive and do not cause dependency. Then there are anti-anxiety medications. These drugs are used to treat anxiety disorders, such as generalized anxiety disorder or panic disorder. They may also help reduce agitation and insom insomnia. Long-term use um, um, long-term, sorry, long-term anti-anxiety drugs typically are antidepressants that also work for anxiety. Fast-acting anti-anxiety drugs uh, help with short-term relief, and all, they also have the potential to cause dependency. So ideally, they should be used um, in the short term. Mood-stabilizing medications are more commonly used to treat bipolar disorders which involve alternating episodes of mania and depression. Sometimes mood stabilizers are used with antidepressants to treat depression. Antipsychotic med medications are typically used to treat psychotic disorders, such as schizophrenia. May, they may have negative side effects, um, 
which, um, which include a dulling of the physical and mental functioning and sometimes dyskinesia. Anti-manic drugs are used to control the manic episodes of um, bipolar disease. Again, as we, um, as we move forward with the semester and look at community issues, um, the issues of crime, the issues of abuse, um, we will be looking for more statistics and more indicators of, of how mental disorders are um, exacerbated by the, by the environment.